In this video, I would like to briefly talk about what Autodesk Revit is, uh, how we go about thinking about it, and what the basic differences are between Revit and AutoCAD. Uh, the reason that I bring up the differences between AutoCAD and Revit is because a majority of people that are learning Revit have a background in drafting programs like AutoCAD or TurboCAD or something like that. Uh, and there is a very big difference between the two different types of software. Although it's possibly helpful in a lot of ways to have a knowledge of AutoCAD, um, just because you're familiar with, you know, Windows operating system and file management and that type of thing. It can also cause some confusion, so if you've never used AutoCAD before, don't worry, you're certainly not at a disadvantage. Um, and in a way, you might actually be in a better position, um, just because you, you won't be so set in your ways about how you're going to be going about, uh, you know, creating a model or a project. So first, really, what is AutoCAD? If you've used it before, this is you know very obvious. But if you haven't, you know what what is the difference between the two pieces of software? Well, CAD uh, is computer aided drafting. So if we really think about a traditional you know two D drawing in AutoCAD, we're really replacing the T squares and pencils and you know things like that with the computer. That's the idea. So at least when you get good at it, CAD is faster than drafting by hand and certainly changes are easier and that's really where uh, computer-aided drafting is coming from is that you're replacing manual tools with the computer. Uh, to move beyond that, once you have 2D drawings, if you would like to you know, bring them to life and create 3D models and renderings and all that type of thing, uh, what you're going to be doing is using various commands such as extrude, revolve, loft, sweep, uh, you know, everything in that kind of area to create these 3D models. It's really a, a sculptural approach, uh, very much like manipulating clay or rock, you know, depending how you're going about it, um, depending what tools you're using. Once these 3D elements are created, uh, it's relatively difficult and quite time consuming to go back and make changes. Um, you really have to plan ahead and know what you want because once they're created, they really are in a way kind of set in stone. They don't, um, they don't change easily, at least when they get fairly complicated. If you're working with, you know, primitives and basic shapes, it's not too hard. But if they get uh, more intricate, it becomes fairly difficult to go back and modify them um, rather than starting from scratch. My little disclaimer here is that uh, I'm really talking about standard AutoCAD um, and there's different versions of AutoCAD such as AutoCAD architecture and that does have objects like walls, windows, doors and that type of thing that at least on the surface act a bit more like Revit than plain AutoCAD does. Um, you can even set up parameters and that type of thing but it's really really just on the surface. Um, these elements are relatively stiff and, and messy and don't always play well together um, and definitely are not as sophisticated as Revit. Um, but what I'm really talking about is working from scratch and using, you know, uh, very plain AutoCAD where you're working from the ground up. So with AutoCAD, you know, when we think about the traditional process of, of how it works, Drawings are a result of carefully reasoned thoughts and design, at least they should be. Um, you know, the CAD drawing process is that of drawing and erasing, drawing and erasing, which eventually leads to the end result. And once you get there, uh, these drawings, these models must be replicated over and over again um, into other drawings like sections and elevations and that type of thing. Um, it's all done manually. So these drawings, as I just said, are manually coordinated and you must, at least in general, update them every time you make a design change. Uh, each drawing, you know, from a 3D model that you've created, or even if they're all two-dimensional for that matter, uh, they're all representing small abstracted parts of a whole. And, you know, as you can imagine um, from this explanation or from experience, they can very easily get out of sync. If you make, uh, you know, a change in the model and you don't update your sections, your elevations, suddenly your entire project is completely out of whack. 
So with Revit, what we have is something that revises instantly, and that's where the name comes from. So the Revit workflow is such that all modifications that are done on the model happen live, uh, completely different than AutoCAD. So each view that we're going to be looking at in Revit represents the model in real time. So each view, whether it's plan, section elevation, schedule, whatever it might be, are all windows that are looking at the whole, if you'd like to think about it that way. Really, what this means is that one change anywhere in a Revit project means it happens everywhere, completely different than AutoCAD. So if you want to think about Revit versus AutoCAD, it's really modeling versus drawing. And to push it even a step farther, Revit versus AutoCAD is automatic coordination versus manual manipulation. So in Revit, when you make a change, everything is automatically coordinated and updated. In AutoCAD, you generally have to manually manipulate and update each view individually. Uh, I also would like to briefly discuss Revit and BIM. Uh, the words Revit and BIM, B-I-M, tend to go hand in hand and are frequently used interchangeably, although that's not totally correct. So BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. Revit is not BIM, but it is a tool to achieve BIM. So BIM is a process that we follow to create building model data that is coordinated and computable. So hopefully <laughs> this reduces um, and even eliminates the need for manual updates. Um, Unlike AutoCAD, as I mentioned, where each change you make, you have to go through and fix on your schedules and sections and elevations. Um, in Revit, it kind of does that for you, although you have to set it up that way. Um, there are situations in which uh, you do have to go in and manually make changes um, that, that will still happen from time to time, but that is great, greatly reduced and you know, not, not super common. Uh, a BIM model contains all major building elements such as the manufacturer, the model, cost, structure, phase information, you know, among other things. So instead of needing, you know, Word documents and Excel spreadsheets and all of that, it's all contained within, um, you know, the one project. Uh, Revit is a parametric building modeler, and what that means is that, uh, you know, when elements are modified, Within the project, uh, you know things like walls, um, you know the roofs, things like that. The adjacent or connected elements will update accordingly and maintain you know any established relationships that you have set up. So, if for example walls become longer or taller, the windows, the doors, and things that are connected to it will update as you have told the program, and so they will maintain um, spaces either in between each other or heights off the floor, things like that. So uh, the idea is that once these parametric relationships uh, are set up, you don't have to go in and tweak things individually. And this is really one of the biggest advantages of Revit and uh, the whole BIM process. So there are a lot of advantages to using Revit than uh, you know, other programs, especially in the architecture industry. And just a few of them would be things like, of course, reduced errors and inconsistencies. If Revit is constantly updating and changing all of your views so that they're all accurate, you're going to have a lot less errors. It streamlines the repetitive drafting tasks that um, you know CAD drafters have had to deal with for quite some time. There is more time then to focus on designing. It's easy to make changes. There are excellent rendering capabilities, including your ability to uh, render in the cloud using Autodesk 360, so your computer's not tied up and it goes a lot faster. You have integrated views such as schedules, legends, things like that, and you can do a variety of um, analyzing on your model, including you know, structure and you know, all that type of thing. So uh, once you get the hang of Revit and how it can work for you, your design process can go much faster and much further than it can with a traditional process and using something like AutoCAD.